if freedom fails. We'd like to take you on a visit to a town that doesn't exist. A town we call Springfield, USA. We'd like to show you how things would be in any American town if communism took over. To illustrate what happens to a man of the arts under a communist regime, Gregory Peck plays the part of Charles Reed in A Matter of Fact. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the first of a series of chamber music concerts which is being presented by the Springfield County Museum. Today's artists were the Muse Art Piano Quartet. In future concerts will include the American Art Quartet, the Seidenberg and Rebner Piano Team, the Lillian Stubner Trio, and the Kompinski String Quartet. I hope to see you all here again next Sunday at 3 p.m. Thank you and good afternoon. Mr. Fowler. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Havenscourt. Enjoy the program? I thought it was simply superb. Magnificent. I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed it. Such, such melody. Such music. Well, well thank you very much, Mrs. Havenscourt, and I'm sure our future programs will be equally as good. Oh, here's Mr. Reed. Afternoon, Jack. Afternoon, Jim. Nice program. Thank you. Well, this is Mrs. Havenscourt. I'd like you to meet Mr. Reed, the director of the Springfield Museum. How do you do? Oh, I'm so happy to know you. You're all doing such wonderful work bringing all this culture to Springfield. Well, we're happy if our efforts please you. Goodness knows this is one place the communists haven't tried to interfere with. Everything else in town has to be supervised. Well, do forgive me if I run off. I must talk to you at your gate sometime. Good day. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> There's appreciation of art for you. That woman knows nothing about music, but she's been here for every series. Likes to talk about it to her friends, I guess. Well, that remark she made about the communists interfering, I'm afraid they've finally gotten around to us. Oh, no. Well, what could they possibly find wrong with the museum? I'm having a meeting in my office tomorrow morning with the rest of the staff. I expect to have the complete directive by then. Well, I don't see what they could possibly want with us. Everything in the museum is... Well, it, it just is. Uh, we'll know more about it tomorrow. Oh, how about coming over for dinner tonight? Oh, thanks a lot, but uh, not tonight. I, I'm booked. Grace? Who else? Tell Stella I said hello anyhow. See you in your office tomorrow. I'm curious to know about our new directive. <laughs> More potatoes, Edward. No, thanks, Mom. Charles? No, I'm finished. What's for dessert? Ice cream cake. Pour the coffee, will you? Say, Dad, I heard you and Mom talking about some new directors for the museum. What are they going to do? Oh, I don't know, son. I'm getting the full information in the morning. Well, I'll bet they'll do the same thing they're doing to us in history. What do you mean? Remember that history book you gave me? The one you used in college? Yes. Well, every year when we get our new history text, the facts go farther and farther from what your book says. It's a little confusing. Here we are. Pass me your plate. Well, uh... What is it that confuses you? Well, for example, World War II. I want to read something to you that we were studying today. I'll go get my book. That poor boy. He's confused. I don't understand how they think they can twist facts to suit their own purpose. Do they think people will believe them? Well, look at Edward. All he knows about the war is what he learns in school or what we tell him. Stella, what are you driving at? Charles, I really think we shouldn't contradict their teachings. Stella. Well, they've put him in work brigades night after night as punishment for his refusal to accept their version of history. He's the one who's suffering. Why Sorry don't... to be so long. I couldn't find the place I was looking for. Now, here. Here's what it says. Only the heroic struggle of the Soviet armed forces, which fought fascist Germany single-handed, made it possible for them, without any outside help, to completely smash the Hitler war machine and liberate Europe from the German fascist invaders. Oh, doesn't it say anything about a little help from us by means of an invasion? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, here. The main objectives of the landings by the English and Americans was not so much to defeat the Germans as to forestall the complete liberation of Western Europe by the Soviets. 
Give me that Charles, book. Dad, Stop my it. boss. Uh, I'm sorry. Edward, pick up your book. I'll help you, man. Charles, I think you'd better rest. You have a meeting in the morning. Morning, Margaret. Mr. Reed in? Oh, good morning, Mr. Fowler. Mr. Reed is in conference with Mr. Davis. Who? After the communists took over here, he was appointed to the top position in the Ministry of Information. Uh -huh. And from what I've heard, they're going to take over public information services, like libraries and museums. Well, I can understand why they'd want to take over the libraries. I, I suppose there's a lot of material they don't want the public to read, but museums, why... Everything here is past history. There's nothing they can change here. Well, they've been at it an awfully long time in there. You want me to find out if Mr. Reed can see you? No, the meeting of the department head starts in ten minutes. I just wanted to see if he was ready. You might as well sit down. No telling how long they'll be there. I don't exactly know how I'm going to break this to my staff. These, these regulations are quite radical. Nevertheless, they will be made. They are important. That is why I came here personally to present them. In the future, a member of the ministry will make periodic checks to see that you do not deviate. I see. Morning, Jim. Well, Mr. Davis, I'd like you to meet one of my staff. This is Mr. Fowler, head of our music department, Jim. This is Mr. Davis of the Ministry of Information. Good morning. How do you do? It is unfortunate that some of your programming will have to be changed, Mr. Fowler. Changed? How do you mean? Uh, Mr. Reed will inform you of the changes. I shall see you again soon, gentlemen. Good morning. What's he talking about? Oh, I'd better break it to the whole staff at once. Uh, Margaret, I'll be in the meeting hall. No calls until I'm through. Yes, Mr. Reed. That pipsqueak. That unspeakable moron. Oh, Lord, as bad as all that? Do you know anything about Davis's background? Oh, little. Well, you won't believe some of the things you're going to hear. And coming from that illiterate, that ignorance... Hey, hey you'd better compose yourself, Chuck. I've never seen you this flustered. Well, I've never been this flustered. I didn't sleep well last night. Blew up at home, and now this... Good morning, gentlemen. Please be seated. Gentlemen, I suggest you prepare yourselves for a shock. Or rather, several shocks. All of our schedules here at the museum have been altered. Music, films, talks, and the art exhibition. We'll start with Fowler and his musical program. What was your schedule, Jim? Well, we were going to present a series of 12 concerts featuring the chamber music of France. You heard the first program yourself yesterday afternoon. Yes. Effective immediately, the entire program will be discontinued. Oh, no. Jim, you, you can't be serious. I'm perfectly serious. Now for the documentary films, gentlemen. The series of films entitled Fishing Around the World is canceled. An approved film showing the advantages of living on a collective farm will replace the one entitled Speckled Trout Across Canada. I presume that this film is considered subversive. Gentlemen, quiet, quiet, please. Now, here are the written regulations governing your various departments. I shall not cover the instructions given us in regard to which paintings we may exhibit nor on the subjects we may discuss. Your schedules will be altered to conform with these approved programs immediately. Oh, oh, come in, Fred. Oh, excuse me, Jim. I didn't know you were using the room. Oh, that's all right. You needn't go. Now, where do I turn this down? There. That's better. Didn't realize how loud I had it. Yeah, it's nice. What is it? Uh, some of the approved music. Shostakovich. Oh. Oh, it sounds okay. Oh, sure, but how can I put this kind of stuff on in our music rooms? It, it needs a symphony orchestra, and all the chamber music that's any good is on the kaput list. You can't use it. I'm having the same trouble with films. I'm going to ask Reed if we can discontinue the series entirely. Uh, Mr. Fowler, Mr. Taylor, would you step out into the hall, please? Oh, uh, Mr. Reed, I uh, wanted to talk to you. My schedule of films, it seems that... Oh. Yes, Go on, Mr. Taylor. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were with Mr. Reed. It, it wasn't anything. Uh, Mr. Davis wants us to accompany Please, him. Please, I'd the... like to hear what Mr. Taylor has to say about his... Well, I, I... 
I wanted to ask if we could discontinue the series. Doesn't the subject matter appeal to you, Mr. Taylor? It, uh, it isn't exactly that. It's, uh, just that the attendance has fallen off. It hardly seems worthwhile. Nevertheless, you will continue to show them. And I suggest that you publicize them a little more than you've been doing. That may increase the attendance somewhat. I shall be happy to comply with any instructions issued by the director, Mr. Reed. After all, it is his prerogative to determine... Mr. Taylor, I should like to remind you that the cultural activities in this city fall under the Ministry of Information. And I am in charge of that department. Mr. Reed serves only to transmit orders from my office. Now, just a minute, Mr. Davis. I am director of this museum. I don't intend to be a mere figurehead. I am not interested in your intentions. I shall remind you of one thing. If there is any further deviation from the orders issued by the ministry, you may be even less than a figurehead. Now, I did not come here to argue with you. Just opened a new exhibit, I understand. Yes, we have. It's pottery and porcelain from various ages. That's the one. I wish to see it. All of you will please accompany me. This is the section, Mr. Davis. What in particular did you wish to see? All of it. Quite a large room. Good display cabinets. Ah, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Reed. Gentlemen. Now, Mr. Crandall, this is Mr. Davis, in charge of culture for Springfield. He wishes to see your pottery and porcelain exhibit. Oh, that's very nice. We have a wonderful selection from primitive times to the present day. Now, uh, where would you like to start? It all looks the same to me. This place reminds me of a novelty store. Oh, but... But surely you're not serious, Mr. Davis. Well, now, let's start right here with the decorated pottery of ancient Greece and Italy. Now, this one on the lower shelf is a Roman crater or, or mixing bowl. It bears the design of the seasons and dates back to the first century before Christ. Fine, fine, but I do not have time for you to describe every piece. Let's move more quickly. Oh, well... Well, now, uh, over here, we have English porcelain. Mm. And, um, and, and here, uh, we see some early Chinese pottery sculpture. Uh, notice the horse from the Tang Dynasty and the rare blue clay. Yeah, that's enough. Let's get on with it. But, but Mr. Davis, you're, you're hardly looking at any of the art objects. Why do you keep looking at the walls and ceiling? I was thinking that it is a shame to waste such good storage space. Mr. Davis... Mr. Crandall, I don't think that Mr. Davis cares to see any more. On the contrary, I find it quite interesting. Do go on, Mr. Crandall. Oh, well, well yes, now right here... Well, here is our prize exhibit. You mean that flower pot? Mr. Davis, this is a 14th century Syrian vase. Notice the metallic luster and the beautiful blue glaze. And Unlock the... the case, Mr. Crandall. Sir? I'd like to take a closer look. Well, uh, Mr. Reed, I don't think... Unlock the case. Uh, do as he says, Mr. Crandall. Why, yes, yes, of course. Uh, now, please, Mr. Davis, d don't take it off the shelf. You might... Now, what is so wonderful about a piece of dishware? D dishware? For, why, for years this was... This was in the Victorian Albert Museum. We have received hundreds of requests to display it. Now, if you will only look closely at the... Ah, oh. oh, how clumsy of me. Why, you, you... You did that on... on purpose. Mr. Reed, I want all of this junk moved out of here. We're going to move the public library in this section of the museum. And, of course, we shall no longer need the services of Mr. Crandall. He's dismissed. <laughs> Charles, will you get it? All right. Well, good evening. Come in, come in. Hello, Charles. Good evening, Chuck. Here, let me take your coat. Oh, hello, Grace, Jim. Nice to see you. Here, Charles, I'll put the coats away. Thank Give you. the children a drink, will you? <laughs> oh, children. You make it sound like you two are a couple of old fogies. <laughs> no such thing. Here, I have the martinis all mixed. Shall I pour one for you, Stella? Yes, indeed. Oh, I, I hear we have a new employee at the museum, Chuck. You didn't mention that to me, Charles. Well, he just came to work this morning. I didn't know I was getting him. He was appointed by the ministry. Davis's idea. Oh, who is he? His name is Shukov. 
He's from Russia. Seems they're importing native communists to take over supervision of all the ministries in America. This one's a specialist on museums and art. Uh, someone else to look out for, though Davis wasn't bad enough. This one will be on our necks all day long. No, I don't know. I had quite a talk with him today. Doesn't seem like a bad sort. In fact, when I told him about Davis breaking the vase, he seemed a bit shocked. Oh, he didn't say anything outright, but I think he doesn't quite approve of Davis or his methods. You be careful of what you say to him. There's no telling what he might do, in spite of how nice he may seem. Well, don't worry. I haven't said anything. Mostly listened. We're to meet again in the morning to talk about revising the setup of our exhibits. If they keep it up, there won't be anything left to show. Well, we can only hope he won't be too harsh. Well, there's one thing we can be thankful for anyway. With all the purges and disappearances that have been going on... Nothing's happened to anyone close to us. There's little enough to be thankful for in a land that's occupied by a foreign power. Let's hope it doesn't get any worse than it is. Now, this is supposed to be a party. Charles, another martini, please. You are listening to A Matter of Fact, starring Gregory Peck. A story of the way things could be if communism took over. A picture of what life would be like under a communist regime in an ordinary American town. A town we call Springfield, USA. section is where we have our porcelain and pottery exhibits. We're converting it into a library. Another of Mr. Davis's innovations. It seems to be another small area for a library. Well, Mr. Davis tells us that our library will be considerably thinned out by the time it's ready to move in. I see. I have enjoyed immensely this tour of your building. Well, this is all of it. Huh? Well, then I wonder if I might speak to you alone, Mr. Reed. Surely. Oh, Jim Davis is coming in this afternoon to look over our exhibits on inventions. I wonder if you'd mind checking there to see if everything's in order. Oh, sure, sure. Be glad. Now, let's step into Crandall's old office. Get away from this noise. I have a slight headache. Oh, sorry. Well, it's nothing serious. No, I don't know. I've been having them for some time. Please sit down. Thank you. The chairs are a bit dusty. Now, what did you wish to speak to me about? Uh, Mr. Reed... Some of what I say to you here, I would say at great risk to myself. Although I have no notorious revelations to make. You are an intelligent man, and you have a deep appreciation of the arts. Well, thank you, but what... In Russia, I held a position similar to that which you hold here. And in Russia, the communists did the same things they are doing here. At first I protested... I soon found that it was safer to do, as they said. By following the party line, I became an authority on museum work, although I was not particularly more qualified than many others. Well, Mr. Shukov, why are you telling me this? Because I respect you, Mr. Reed, and because I want you to respect me. There will be things intolerable things that I must make you do while I am here. Changes in your work that will repulse you. I hate it, all of it. You know that you could be killed for making a statement like that. Yes, I know. But I had to speak to someone. You see, I had spent my whole life in Russia until they sent me here to, to supervise the alterations in the American museums. Always I had heard about how freedom of expression was denied to the American people. Well, what caused you to change your mind? I have been impressed by the truthfulness of your museums. There as they should be, houses of truth in which there can be no place for falsification and counterfeits, things that true scholarship cannot tolerate. Well, so far, we haven't had to falsify anything. Ah, but you will. I don't understand. What is there in a museum that you can make false? Everything here is simply a matter of fact. You can't change facts. <laughs> you would be surprised at some of the facts that communism can change. In fact, you may witness the alteration of some facts this very afternoon when Mr. Davis arrives. Mr. Davis? 
Yes, Mr. Reed. I'm over here in the electrical section. Sorry I didn't catch you when you came in. Oh, that's all right. I've been enjoying myself browsing through these displays. They're very amusing. Amusing? Yes, I don't know who's been doing your research, Mr. Reed, but I've never seen a more flagrant display of misinformation. Take this exhibit right here, the works of Thomas Alva Edison. Edison was one of America's greatest inventors. But what did he invent? What? Everything you see on display here. Permit me to show you where you're wrong. This card here, for example. It reads, Edison includes among his first inventions in the field of telegraphy the transmitter and receiver for the automatic telegraph. Similar to the model displayed here. Well, he did invent them. Mr. Reed, I have with me some notes from the encyclopedia compiled by the Communist Academy of Science. In them, you will find that the transmitter and receiver shown here were invented by Jacobi in St. Petersburg in the year 1845. Mr. Edison wasn't born until two years later. Mr. Davis, I don't believe that, and I don't think you do either. This is just one of the many errors I find here. It seems that your greatest errors lie in the dates of these inventions. The most important advances in almost every field come after the revolution in Russia. Under communism and its resultant freedom, men of science were able to forge ahead in these many fields. Let us consider this carbon telephone transmitter. Edison worked with Emil Berliner on that. They invented it together. A telephone was invented in Russia. I see that you have credited Edison with the invention of the first motion picture machine. This was invented by Boldarev. Well, just uh, what other inventions did the communists inspire, Mr. Davis? In this department, almost everything you have attributed to these imposters. You know, of course, Vikstasemsky. No. Then you are not fit for your job. He invented the photographic method of recording and reproducing sound. Edison had nothing to do with that, nor with sound motion pictures. I think I've heard enough, Mr. Davis. There is much more, Mr. Reed. You will see that the proper changes are made. Come with me. Ah, here. A model of the plane in which the first sustained flight was made by the Wright brothers, Poppycock. Twenty-five years before them, Golubov became the first flyer in the world when he flew the first motor-driven plane built by Alexander Mochaisky, the father of modern aviation. May I see those notes, Mr. Davis? You may. And in your office, you will find a copy of the Academy of Science Encyclopedia to guide you in making the necessary changes in these exhibits. I see. Uh, this is quite interesting. The theory of jet propulsion was originally developed under the Communist Aeronautic League. And the design for the first jet plane was suggested by... Ch... Ch... Chayolkovsky. Yes. Now, this list covers a multitude of subjects. Aeronautics, electricity, transportation, communication... That is correct. Please see that the guide cards are changed in accordance with the Academy Encyclopedia so that proper credit is given for all these works. Is that all? Yes, that is all. Oh, yes. The bust of Benjamin Franklin in the main hallway. You uh, wish to have the bust removed? Oh, yes. Franklin's experiments in electricity were stolen from early Russian scientists. You knew this all along? Why, of course. His statue will be removed immediately. Not removed. Destroyed. Oh, destroyed, of course. Like this. Ah, control yourself, Mr. Reed. You will need those notes. You serve no purpose by tearing them up. Now, and... let us play safe. Let us destroy all photographs and paintings and statues and books. Burn them! I don't think that will be necessary. Just a certain few which we find are not in keeping. And the names of the artists will be removed from our paintings. And we'll add the name of some communists. Mr. Reed, you've been working too hard. A little rest will do you... What of our painting in the lobby? The one of Adam and Eve. Shall we have it removed? Or has it been established by the ministry that they, too, were communists? <laughs> yeah, don't get excited. Oh, I have an even better idea. Why don't we just tear down the whole museum, Mr. Davis? This model of the telephone. Edison didn't invent this. <laughs> tear down and destroy. Where did communism begin its work of alteration, Mr. Davis? Wasn't it with the churches? All the churches have been closed or destroyed. Like this. <laughs> what about the symbols of religion? <laughs> what about God, Mr. Davis? You destroyed the statues and paintings of Jesus Christ himself. <laughs> and freedom. What have you done to freedom? You've torn it from the people. You ripped the heart and soul out of every freedom-loving country on earth. Ripped the heart out as you ripped the fine trees. <laughs> Destroy. Destroy as you destroy a fragile piece of valuable pottery. Like you destroyed every semblance of decency. Like you destroyed human rights. 
and religion and freedom. Destroy every vestige of decency and honor and faith and life. <laughs> No one answers at the house. Well, how about the Ministry of Information? They said they'd call us if they found out anything. And Mr. Davis said he was coming over this afternoon to see how we were progressing on labeling a new exhibit. Well, he's going to be unhappy. It's not coming along very well. Nobody wants to put up those lies. I've been typing a list of the inventions. Listen to what they say. Further information will be forthcoming on other inventions developed under the Communist Academy. These include... Calculating machines, ice hockey, guerrilla warfare, cobblestone streets, and the bicycle. Do they actually think anyone would believe that? Uh, here's another quote. Only in communistic theaters is Shakespeare performed as he was intended to be performed. Oh. Come in, Mr. Shukov. We were just reading about some of the inventions which were inspired by communism. It's rather ridiculous, aren't it? Oh, well, Mr. Shukov, that's a strange thing for you to say. Not so strange. Being careful is a waste of time. You see, some days ago I had several long talks with Mr. Reed. He knows how I feel about this sacrilege. Then you don't follow this line? No, I never have. But it was necessary to appear to be doing so in order to, to, to survive. Still, it isn't wise to air these opinions so freely. What difference does it make? The communists have altered the laws of nature to suit themselves. They have made a mockery of history. What good is accomplished when one must go through life wearing blinders, seeing only half-truths? Mr. Reed felt that way, too. Yes. But he won't have to cope with the evils of communism anymore. Why not? He's insane. <laughs> You have just heard what happens to a cultural institution under a communist regime. You have just heard how facts can be altered to suit the purpose of the party in power. You think this could not happen? It did happen. It did happen in the communist-dominated country of Russia. It did happen in the Lenin Museum in Moscow. In this museum, in order to hide true facts, the communists destroyed and counterfeited all material unfavorable to their regime. have been listening to If Freedom Failed, starring Gregory Peck as Charles Reed in A Matter of Fact, with Raymond Burr featured as Davis. This program has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.